Hi, today's question would be theoretical, and the question is, what are the types of sperm that could be, in principle, be formed by XYY male? So, as you see, here we have a trisonomy of the sex chromosome, so we have two YY chromosomes and one X chromosome. And phenotypically, this is going to be a male. So, let me write down this information one more time. So, this is go going to be karyotype of uh, a person. And imagine uh, that uh, if um, during meiosis, uh, the division would be here and then two um, gametes would be formed or two sperms one would have uh, X chromosome and another one would have two YY chromosomes. So this is one variant and the second variant so the same genotype of the male and imagine that uh, division would be here. So we would have X, Y um, genotype here in one gamete or sperm and Y in the other gamete. So as you see, uh, three out of four would result in a male. So this is would be a male and this would be a male and this also would be a male. And here would be a female. So um, if we build a Punnett square, and this is going to be a genotype of the father, X, Y, Y. And if we cross with a female, whose genotype would be X, X. And as you see, we can have here four uh, different types of gametes. So let's list all of them. So we can cross with X. Y, Y, X, Y, and Y gametes. So now let's build a Punnett square and find the genotypic and phenotypic ratios. So we would have here uh, four columns and two rows. So here we would have X, X, and this is going to be a female, and here we would have X, X, and this is also going to be female, and here we would have X, Y, Y, so uh, this is going to be a male, a male here, and X, X, Y here, and this is also going to be a male, because whenever we have at least one Y chromosome, this would mean that uh, phenotypically this is going to be a male. So X, X, Y here, and X, Y here, and X, Y here. So as you see, uh, we would have two females, normal phenome, females, genotypically normal, and phenotypically of course, and two genotypically and phenotypically normal males here and uh, also we would have here about uh, four out of eight um, genotypically abnormal uh, uh, genotypes. So as you see this is going to be 50 percent and this is going to be 25% and 25% here. And uh, as I told earlier, uh, the phenotypic ratio going to be one female, two, three males, because all these genotypes here would be phenotypically males. So, uh, 
what also I want to add that this is just a theoretical uh, we can call yield just like in chemistry but in real life just like in chemistry uh, theoretical yield uh, never can be reached uh, but here for the different reasons and um, in order to prepare for this video today I made uh, some research I didn't find information about XYY and uh, XXY genotypes but I did find information about Klinefelter syndrome and this is when we have X and um, zero we also can notate it as uh, X O or X zero and this is uh, when we have phenotypically female but female going to have only one X chromosome and this genetic disorder happens uh, one per 2500 life births but if we study fetus material from self-abortion, we would find that 7% uh, of all self-abortion would be due to this aneuploidy when we have uh, Klinefelter syndrome, when we have a 1X chromosome in females. So, as you see, uh, the mother nature works very efficiently and uh, in most of the cases uh, such pregnancies would self-abort and that's why we have uh, only occurrence of this genetic disorder only one per 2500 uh, life-born girls and the same uh, picture we can expect here where uh, uh, the theoretical um, occurrence of this genetic disorder should be 50% in the progeny, but uh, in the reality this can be 50 folds less than uh, this theoretical prediction. So in reality we may have here uh, only about 1% and that means that uh, these two uh, percentages here would uh, increase and would make uh, about uh, 49.5 percent here and about 49.5 percent here so as you see total number would be 100 but uh, here uh, these genotypes uh, wouldn't be represented as 50 percent in the progeny but most likely like about 1% in the progeny. So uh, people with this um, XYY syndrome, usually this syndrome even doesn't have a special name because this is not actually a syndrome. Uh, people who has uh, one extra Y chromosome, also sometimes called as uh, super males, actually uh, phenotypically normal uh, these uh, people are fertile and um, they just may be a little bit uh, taller than uh, uh, normal people who normal males who is XY uh, by average about three inches this is about seven eight centimeters and also I want to mention that uh, due to some um, work made by Nelson in 1968 where she reported uh, that uh, she find people in the prison that has uh, unusual uh, frequency of occurrence of this genetic disorder and this information were picked up by many popular magazines and journals but I also want to tell you that, first of all, this information was published in non-peer-reviewed um, journal. So, uh, as it turned out to be that scientific information uh, were not uh, valid, because the sample was just two people. 
she only find two people with x y uh, sorry with one extra y chromosome and uh, she made uh, her assumptions on these findings and uh, as you see this idea got very popular and you even can find this information in some textbooks that uh, people with this uh, extra Y chromosome may show uh, violent character and uh, you may find a uh, high frequency of this uh, genotype in prisons but uh, once again this is not true and we can uh, call this as a urban tale and my final note would be I just want once again bring your attention that uh, phenotypic ratio males and females would be fi about 50 to 50 percent or one to one and this is what we normally find uh, actually uh, we find uh, phenotypic ratios would be um, 49 percent girls and 51 percent boys and usually it's explained uh, that uh, sperm and uh, the gender or sex of the progeny depends on the male, on its sperm, whether it is uh, X or Y chromosome uh, in the sperm. And because Y chromosome is much smaller than X chromosome, so it's believed that uh, such um, sperm moves a little bit faster because it's lighter and that's why we have such uh, ratios as 49 to 51 uh, at the stage of the life birth but by the age of the uh, about uh, 18 and uh, 20 we would have uh, ratios about 50 to 50 percent exactly and this is all for today thank you for your attention Please subscribe for my new videos that I post almost every day. Thumbs up if you like this video. Please write your comments, questions if you have any. And see you in the next video. Goodbye.